Hi, I'm Yasmin Hussein, and this week we look back at the top motoring news stories of the year. 2013 was a big year for anniversaries in the car industry. Aston Martin got the party started celebrating its 100th birthday in January, with the unveiling of a plaque where it all began in 1913, as well as a special Vanquish Centenary Edition. Porsche celebrated 50 years of the 911 as headline sponsor at the Goodwood Festival of Speed, topped off with a giant sculpture outside Goodwood House. Lamborghini also reached its half century and marked the milestone with a number of special models, from the Aventador LP724 Anniversario to the extreme aircraft inspired Egoista concept, rounding off 2013 with the lavish launch of the 3.3 million euro Venino Roadster aboard an Italian naval aircraft carrier in Abu Dhabi. Confidence in the US car industry manifested itself in the form of a mini muscle car revival for 2013, kicking off with the launch of the all-new Chevrolet Corvette Stingray at the Detroit Auto Show. The most powerful standard Stingray ever, with 450 horsepower on tap from its 6.2-litre V8, went on sale in the UK at just over £61,000. Not to be outdone, Ford has just confirmed that its legendary Mustang will at last be available officially on our shores for the first time in 2014, its 50th year of production. The all-new Mustang retains design elements harking back to the 1960s original and will reprise its rivalry with the Corvette for muscle car supremacy. It was Hypercar Central at the Geneva Motor Show in 2013. Lamborghini unveiled a 3 million euro 220 mile per hour Venino, limited to a production run of just three models, all of which had been pre-sold. While Ferrari pulled the covers off the striking V12 engine LaFerrari, which is faster than both the Enzo and the F12 Berlinetta around the Fiorano test track. McLaren, however, always happy to spoil an Italian party, showed off the road-ready version of the 217mph P1 in a new yellow paint finish. Priced at 1 million euros, all 375 units have now sold out. In 2013 saw some clever concept cars which drew upon sophisticated but also stunningly simple ideas. Toyota's versatile electric MiWi was clad with light interchangeable polypropylene body panels, while Citroen's Cactus concept featured customizable air capsules covered with a soft skin to protect its bodywork. Pininfarina revealed the spectacular Sergio concept as a tribute to the company's president who passed away last year while Nissan unveiled the Blade Glider, inspired by, you've guessed it, a glider. And Mercedes gave us an awesome AMG Vision Gran Turismo, designed specifically for the latest version of the ever-popular PlayStation game Gran Turismo 6. Car makers continue to feed the market's addiction to SUVs throughout 2013 kicking off in March at the New York Auto Show with the world debut of the all-new Range Rover Sport. Later in the year, Mercedes unveiled its first ever compact SUV, the GLA, and Jaguar showed its intent to finally enter the segment with its near-production-ready CX-17 concept. Porsche was not caught on the back foot, however, as it revealed the baby brother to the hugely successful KN, the Macan but the most significant arrival was that of the second-generation Qashqai. Nissan will be hoping that it can continue the tremendous success of the outgoing model. The Japanese made a strong showing in the premium sector, with Infiniti launching the technology-laden Q50 saloon and Lexus revealing the all-new rear-drive IS range, including the first full hybrid IS300H alongside the petrol-powered IS250. BMW replaced its 1 and 3 series coupe range with an all new 2 and 4 series, while Mercedes released an all new S Class focusing on three priorities intelligent drive, efficient technology, and essence of luxury. And at the tail end of 2013, an apparently shrunken version of the Mercedes flagship broke cover as the all new C Class saloon. 
Motor show season kicked off in Detroit, with Mercedes unveiling its new four-door CLA concept for Generation Y, claiming dibs on a brand new vehicle segment. Geneva saw coach builder Bertoni turning its hand to an Aston Martin shooting brake, presented by a glitzy golden Bond girl. While BMW debuted the X4 concept at the Shanghai Auto Show, signalling the future expansion of its X family with production slated for 2014. Midsummer's Goodwood Festival of Speed was marked by the record-breaking sale of Fangio's 1954 Mercedes W196 racer for a cool £19.6 million. Frankfurt saw Audi mark the 30th anniversary of the Sport Quattro with a modern interpretation as a plug-in hybrid concept. Finally, on the eve of the LA Auto Show, Jaguar revealed its all-aluminium F-Type Coupe, describing it as the most performance-focused sports car that the company has ever produced. 2013 saw a host of funny and wacky stunts caught on film. Mini took to the snow for a mammoth effort, backflipping a highly modified countryman off a specially constructed ramp. As the sun came out, Mazda encouraged us all to go topless in this MX-5 video, calling in the help of Great Britain's ultimate frisbee team. London's Battersea Power Station saw Giancarlo Fisichella test out Shell's new V-Power Nitro Plus fuel, and it clearly works. Across the pond, a flotilla of Fiat 500 watercrafts was deployed to escort an Italian cruise liner to safe harbour. And finally, Renault went old school, bringing on the dancing girls to put some zing into a mundane test drive campaign. A little more ooh la than va va voom, we think. Twenty thirteen drew to a close with the announcement of the seven finalists for the twenty fourteen Car of the Year Award. BMW's first ever electric car, the innovative i3, made the cut and is likely to be among the front runners to take the crown. It's joined on the shortlist by another electric vehicle, the Tesla Model S, as well as family orientated cars like the Skoda Octavia, the Peugeot 308, the Mazda 3, and the Citroen C4 Picasso. Last but by no means least to make up the Magnificent 7 is the uber luxurious Mercedes S Class. The winner of the Car of the Year Award will be announced at the Geneva Motor Show in March 2014. That's all we've got time for, but we'll have more motoring news next week.